I'm going to be doing a documentary shoot coming up soon where, where it's a slice of life documentary or that follows around a subject over the course of their everyday life uh, activities and stuff like that. And I want to capture good audio on the main subject and possibly other people. So I got this Zoom F2 because the this shooting situation is very similar to what the F2 has been advertised for, uh, for weddings. So whenever you want to mic up the bride or the groom all day for the entire ceremony and have their audio and not worry about monitoring it and not worrying about the audio clipping because the F2 has 32-bit float recording and I think that's the only thing you can do on this is 32-bit float. 32-bit float is like raw video. Uh, it's it's very big, it's a robust audio file and that does not clip no matter how loud you scream and you can always bring it up uh, if you're whispering as long as you get the mic placement correct and there's nothing interfering with the mic. So the F2 here comes with this lavalier. I don't think this lavalier is that great, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it real quick in this video and I'm gonna use the included lav. I would supply my own lav that's a much better quality, but as long as you have the microphone in a good proximity to the voice and nothing's interfering it, like nobody scratches it or, or, or messes the mic up, I usually have the mic sealed in some foam and then I tape it to a garment or the person and I hide it. And it, the, the foam that I use to, to put over the caps, the mic capsules prevents a lot of the, the, the clothes rustling. I can go over that in another video, but in this video, I'm gonna test this and see if this is a good purchase and if I should get more of these for when I'm doing these slice of life documentaries. And the battery life here, it runs on two double A's for four, up to 14 hours. And then it records everything to a micro SD card. 32-bit float is a is also a pretty big audio file, and I think I have a 32 gig. There's a Bluetooth version, and there's the regular version. This is the regular version, so it's I think it's around 170-ish dollars still. It, this has been out for a while, and I just got this one, and I might get more. But you there's no way to monitor the audio. There's no way to set gains. There's no way to set anything. It's plug and play. You hit record. That's the beauty of 32-bit float is that you don't need to control the gain at all. You just gotta get your mic placement correct. But I already have the DJI mic. And the DJI mic, just like the Rode Wireless Go, on their transmitters here, the transmitters have built-in audio recording. And this one can do 24-bit up to I think 14 hours of internal recording. It doesn't have a SD card. Everything is, there's an internal recording in there and uh, in internal storage. And then you just plug it via the USB-C into your computer. And then you download the, the footage, uh, the audio files to your computer. So I was looking at this as possibly, maybe I could just use this instead of this. But as I was doing some more research on the capabilities of the re internal recording, there are a few limitations for my situation that makes the F2, I think, the better choice because I want a, the best audio and I don't want to take any chances. The benefit of the DJI is that I have two of them, so I can mic two people, or if I'm micing one person, cause these battery, the internal batteries here, they last about five hours, 5.5 hours, about five hours. So I can put this on my subject for five hours. When this battery dies, I take that away and then I have the second one and pop that on the subject. So for one person, this is like a 10 hour, 10 hour system right here. And, or, or it can do uh, continuously because this case can charge everything twice. So as I'm, this one I'm recording and then I'm done. I pop this one back to charge it, put this one up, put this one on the person. And then by the time this one's dead, this one should be charged and I can keep going for two cycles. Um, and the batteries are gonna die before the recording internal storage is gonna die. Cause there's 14 hours of internal storage. The battery is only about five hours. So I was thinking about doing that. Problem is the recording here is only a mono signal. 
and it's 24 bits. So if somebody does scream, then I will I will clip, and I don't have redundancy in that scenario. This is cool because you can hit record and it automatically records. I can record from the built-in mic or I could plug in a lav. I'm usually gonna plug in a lav. So the, the, I, I see a lot of potential with this if I know that the audio levels aren't gonna go crazy. But because I don't know that, a lot of documentaries are unpredictable with audio. So that's why this is more of an insurance than this is. But I'm gonna test both of these in, in, in a scenario to see if the audio just really matters. If, I mean, if the 32-bit really matters. One thing I could do for to have redundancy is that this, the receiver, if you only pair it with one transmitter here, the receiver can output a safety track. So because this is mono and the output is stereo, you can set something here as a setting to have uh, one level up and one level down uh, with the audio gain. So if somebody does clip and I'm recording this with another external recorder, then I have a backup track. So that's two redundancy tracks. I have my original one that's being recorded internally and then the redundancy is the other channel that's being recorded and the, the, the lower backup channel. The problem with that is that I have to be always monitoring and I have to be within the range of this system. Once I'm out of range, once this goes into somebody's pocket and they go behind five walls, I lose the connection so I don't get that redundancy and I can't get that backup track. Also, um, because I can't monitor it live, I can adjust, well the only way you can adjust the uh, sensitivity of the microphone or the lav mic that you plug in is with the receiver. You have to adjust the sensitivity here. So I could do that and use this as a mixer, but then again, I need to be in proximity of this and that's, I'm, I'm also gonna be rolling with the camera. That could be all bad news for me. I feel like I know where I'm gonna go with this, but I just wanted to see uh, in this video uh, what this would sound like. Okay, have that. And what I will use for a lab for the DJI is a Rode. This is the Rode Go 2. I reviewed this in previous videos on my channel. This is this is a really good lavalier here. Check, check, yeah, there we go. It's it's in, and now let me just get, uh, dial in the, the right sensitivity. Do that by going here. Receiver, oh, no, I want transmitter gain. Trans, uh, transmitter settings, transmitter gain. Check, check. Uh, let's go to negative eight. So what I'll do is I'll press record on both of them and then I'll talk on both of them and I'll try to raise my voice and then I'll play back the audio or I'll switch back and forth in this video. So let me record here, I get record. And it, when it's recording, when this is recording, that red light's on, and then I'll hit record there. Yep, the red light is on. And I'm gonna clip both of them to my shirt, and then I'm gonna go back and forth. There we go, they're both clipped to my shirt. I'm gonna go back and forth uh, with, with which audio I'm gonna use. Okay, so now um, what you're listening to is the F2. This is the F2 audio on my shirt. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna test the levels. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Loud, loud, loud. Loud, loud, loud. I'm loud, I'm talking loud now. Okay, all right, and then going down. Let's try that same thing on the DGI now. Check, check, test, 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 testing. I'm going loud, test, 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 test. Scream, test, testing one. Test loud, test loud. Another concern that I have with just putting this on the talent and, and setting it and forgetting it is what if, not just the battery dies, but what if they accidentally push some of these buttons, will that turn off the recordings or affect the recordings or in any way? On the F2, you can, there's a hold button here, and then once you click that on hold, I don't think the buttons do anything. Yeah, it looks like 
all of the buttons they they're ineffective like it takes away all the buttons so once you put it on hold someone could accidentally hit the buttons and nothing will happen i think with the dgi oh i didn't set it you have to set this in the receiver but here is the on off button to, to start and stop recording you can program it to hit it once and start recording and then it disables the record button you have to go back into the receiver to stop it so I, I didn't do that I didn't set that but um, so you could set it that way and when this is in somebody's pocket or, or when the talent is running around with it they could hit the buttons and it won't it won't turn off the recording but okay that's what it sounded like uh, I'm not sure yet um, which I'm gonna use I see pros and cons with either um, but yeah, um, maybe if you see hear a difference or if you have any comments about my situation, please leave them below.